Good morning. Thursday, made it to Thursday on the downhill slide of things. March 30th, second to last day, next to last day. Tomorrow's last day of March. <laughs> So, <clears throat> trying to uh, think of uh, anything newsworthy uh, today. Nope, I can't think of anything. <laughs> Our, uh, the, um, all right. <clears throat> Good morning, Dennis, Betty. Glad you guys are on here. Looks like people are coming on kind of slow today, or I don't know. Maybe it's my phone just not showing everybody to you. I don't know, but <clears throat> <clears throat> maybe he is. Maybe they <clears throat> limit who sees this too. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how any of that works, but <clears throat> not going to worry about it too much. Uh, as long as some of you get to watch it, <clears throat> that's great. And uh, is a help. We'll just keep doing it. And so, but yep, yeah, it's a uh, it's a good morning, and um, it does just seem like it's working a little weird this morning. So I have no idea. But we're just gonna move on. I, I did see that uh, the the trannies are having their tranny vengeance uh, day this this weekend. They call it. Tranny Vengeance Day, but it's actually Tranny Vengeance Weekend. So, um, all weekend long, uh, it's supposed to be marching in D.C. Watch out there, Pelosi. It's a coup. I'm telling you, it's going to be worse than January 6th, and they're coming for you. You better get the gates up and uh, get your armed guards out. And don't, oh yeah, like January 6th, don't, don't forget to... I have that reporter uh, right there next to you, too. So, uh, <clears throat> anyway, it, uh, <clears throat> I, I don't, I didn't read the article, but um, sounds to me like, uh, uh, oh, what's the, what's the one group um, of, uh, oh, man, what are they called? Anyway, he got arrested there in D.C., um, or his the uh... anyway, I, I'm sure he's not a good guy. I, I just don't remember his name, but uh, he he got uh, North Carolina just aim it enabled the ability to purchase handguns. Hmm. Oh, that's good, right? Good. Well, we're getting ready to pass all kinds of gun laws here, Amy, that are stupid. Never work, but uh, anyway, I, I don't, uh, the, <clears throat> anyway, that guy got arrested. <clears throat> He's supposed to be one of these uh, uh, right-wing conspiracy characters, you know, that has their their whole group of people, and uh, <clears throat> anyway, um he uh, sounds to me like uh, he might get off because it sounds like the FBI set him up. And not sure, but um, Joyce, I did. I saw Dwight was preaching also, and uh, that's good. He's a good preacher, and I, I know he'll help those guys out there. But anyway, who cares <clears throat> about what's going on out there? Um, it uh, just sad to see some of the craziness that's going on. We had a... Uh, had a, a shooting in, in Fort Morgan yesterday. Um, some families that, that I know were uh, affected by this. And you know what? Just uh, pray for families. Um, and I, <clears throat> I don't know. <clears throat> I can guess that drugs were probably involved. And uh, <clears throat> we need to... <clears throat> we need to keep telling people about Jesus. Drugs aren't going to bring you any happiness and uh, <clears throat> that kind of lifestyle. Uh, <clears throat> I find it sad that 
our government just wants people to become more <clears throat> more and more dependent. They get them dependent upon drugs. They can get them dependent upon the government. Um, and truly, the only freedom you have is through Christ. And we just need to reach out to everybody and tell them about Jesus, right? <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> and anyway, sorry about the voice. So I was reading in Deuteronomy 13, and no sense in you know, getting into all the other junk that's going on. But I read this. I find this, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm with you, Joel. I know, it's a uh, craziness. So, if thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor their fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, thou shalt not consent unto him. And so, uh, and, and look, I understand we're talking Old Testament, and but the principle still it, it applies to us today. If you have a family member that is trying to entice you to, Walk away from serving God and, and trying to uh, get it get into your head that you're wasting your time following God and, and being obedient to the Word of God, then you need to get away from that person. I, that you know sometimes it's family members that are some of the worst detriments to your your uh, spiritual walk. and so be careful with that. I mean, it goes on and and it says here that, but uh, thou shalt surely kill him. I mean, Old Testament um, talked about killing them. Now, I'm not saying we do that. It's the Democrats that kill everybody, okay? We, we have all these shooters going on, and they've all been wildly insane uh, Democrats that are killing everybody. You know, if we want any kind of gun control, let's let's start with every Democrat out there giving up their guns, and and uh, uh, you guys need to give them up, all right? And and give them to your conservative neighbor because it's not the conservatives shooting everybody. It's the insane Democrats that are killing everybody. So please, Democrats, give up your guns. I mean, you need to do this for the safety of the world and safe, definitely the safety of our country. Give up your guns, Democrats, okay? And... and uh, save us uh, from from this uh, lunacy that's going on. But I'm not saying that we go do that to our family, but that's what God said. God thought it was important enough that do not allow family members, whoever they are, that uh, and, and here some of these were close family members, to drag you down. You know what I've seen? I've seen, I've actually seen it more often than I would care to even think about, where where adult parents have uh, ha had a had a child who who uh, is an adult, you know, goes off and does something crazy, or uh, even in in high school, and and they let their children drag them down instead of the other way around. I'm telling you, you you need to you need to wake up. You need to do the right thing, and don't let people drag you down. Be careful of the company that you keep, and I'm I'm it just. Sometimes obedience brings separation and be careful of, of who you are around. And if they're dragging you down, then separate from that, right? And and then, I don't know, I found this interesting. This is just a little lightheartedness here uh, over, well, not quite, not this these two verses, but later on. These two verses in chapter 14, verses one and two, just kind of jump out of nowhere, right? I mean, here he is, he's talking about, you know, family members dragging you down. Then he's talking about idolatrous cities that if you go into these cities and they're full of idolatry, you destroy them, right? I mean, that's what he says in the rest of chapter 13. And then the first two verses of chapter 14, you're the children of the, the Lord your God, okay? So now he's reminding them, you, you have a special place in life. And talking about the Israelites, well, today, as believers, we have a special place in in God's eyes, and as a child of God, we have certain behaviors, right? You are the children of the Lord your God. You shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. 
For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. It, look, it's so important that, um, that you um, live in a way that God wants you to live. And something that I find is interesting here in these two verses, and, and I don't take grief lightly. I, I, I see people grieving all the time and, and having to deal with that and want to help people in their grief, right? But we need to also be reminded that, that we shouldn't grieve as believers. We just shouldn't grieve the same as the, as the lost people. I, I mean, uh, I, here's a verse. I want to read this to you, okay? It's over in First Thessalonians, and it's chapter 4, <clears throat> Verse 13, this is what he says. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, concerning those that have died before you, okay? And and we know there's persecution going on. People are dying and during this time. And, and he says, look, I just don't want you being ignorant of this and, and concerning those who have died, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Look, we, we grieve. And we should grieve for the loss of those that we love, but we grieve differently. When when we have uh, a saved member the, of of our family uh, pass away, then they're not they're not dead. They they are still very much alive, and they've moved on to heaven. And and yes, it, it's hard. <clears throat> it's extremely hard to lose someone. And and I I understand that I have lost family members I've lost good friends and and <clears throat> and I know that and I see the struggles and I pastor people who are dealing with those struggles every day and so uh, I understand that but we still need to grieve differently than the unsaved people and 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 I think that's what he's telling them there you know you guys are different so act different and and allow God to. A work in your heart and and change you and and help you walk through the grief, right? So uh, I, I hope that can help us all. And but then I and then that's like out of nowhere, right? Then he goes in and he starts talking about the the diet that we have that they have at the time. You you should not eat any eat any abominable thing. And so then he goes into the unclean things that that um, uh, we need to to not to, that they did not need to touch right and missy i know it, it it does take a long time to to deal with the grief and, and i understand that i'm not i'm not against somebody grieving at all i hope everybody understands that we it is a process but the the process of grief for a believer really should be different than the process of grief for those that do not know christ as their savior because they have no hope i mean dead is dead to them and but for a believer, then, and and if we know that our family member has a profession of faith and uh, is on their way to heaven, then it, it truly does help us in in processing that. But and then he goes in, and and so here we have the diet and dietary laws that they have. But here's something that I'm very thankful for. Okay, it says here talking about those things and talking about different kinds of flying things that you don't eat, right? And, and he says, and the stork. Okay, I'm not going to eat the stork and the heron after her kind. So, you know, I know this is Old Testament law. We can eat whatever and be thankful. But, however, in the lapwing and the bat. And every creeping thing that flieth is unclean unto you. They shall not be eaten. Thank you very much. I do not think I would ever want to eat a bat. I, I mean, as hungry as I could get... I just would really, I just think I would really struggle at eating a bat. Anybody seen a bat up close? Oof. You know, they're just like a little demonic looking mouse with wings. And and uh, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I don't know. I just thought that was interesting that he made sure that they understand you do not eat a bat. And yeah. <laughs> Yeah, see, I'm not the I'm not the only one grateful that uh, those were considered unclean, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, so there was a little lightheartedness in the middle of the devotion today. All right, so, um, 
But then look at verse one of Psalm 71. And, and let, we'll, we'll get back to the seriousness of, of the devotion, right? It says, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Well, that's that's a good thing, right? Let, let's trust the Lord and, and let's uh, let him guide us. Let me never be put to confusion. You, you know, the the where we're at today in in uh uh in our world is it's just full of confusion uh, i mean we have we have states that are i saw a state i think just passed a law that uh if an adult uh is coercing and in taking a an underage child to get an abortion they can be arrested good i'm thankful for that they need to be and so uh, but then you have states like ours that are that are trying to uh, tie up the the caring pregnancy centers and limiting their uh, First Amendment rights, uh, uh, hindering them from helping those that uh, may not want an abortion and uh, or they change their mind about an abortion. I mean, we have we we have the lunacy left all the way to the very conservative right of things and. And, and uh, it's just a wicked battle that, that's going on right now. And you have all this confusion, all these you know, bonfires that are going on around us. And, and look, here, here's the thing. You want to discern what's right and what's wrong. Then if it's full of confusion, it's not of God. Here, here we see that let me never be put to confusion. Look, all throughout the New Testament, God talks about having a sound mind, a healthy mind. It's a, a mind that... that uh, he even says in in uh, the Corinthians, I believe, that we have the mind of Christ, and so uh, how, we need to understand that God does not lead us to confusion. Now, if you are uncertain about something, then spend time praying about it. Spend time reading in God's Word. Study the subject out in God's Word. Try to find what God says about it, and and then make a a decision based upon. The, the Holy Spirit giving you discernment, giving you wisdom, and and uh, uh, showing you in his word and through the leading of the Holy Spirit what's right. And and he'll give you a sound mind in that decision making. And be careful of the confusion that's out there. That doesn't come from God. God is not the author of confusion. He, he tells us that. And so uh, he, he does not do that. And so let us uh, be strong in our faith and 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 let us learn to practice using the word of god to to direct us and and give us wisdom in in the things that that uh uh we need to do right and then it, this this uh psalm is very good just i i think david was concerned he must have written this one maybe when he was older because there were several times at verse 18 now also when i am old and gray headed o god Forsake me not until I have showed thy strength unto this generation, thy power to everyone that has come. Uh, earlier, he had said, Lord, don't, don't forget me in, in uh, my, my old age. And, and, so, and then he also made this statement in uh, verses 15 and 16. He says that my mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day. For I know not the numbers thereof. He, he doesn't know how many days he has. And and nor do we, right? And so let let's make let's make it worthwhile what we're doing today. Let let's live today. Don't focus on tomorrow, uh, and and really, just stop focusing on yourself so much. You know, everybody talks about the self wellness and self being and and selfishness. It, it's all a part of that humanistic ideas that that are being thrown out there and. One of the, the, the best ways for self-wellness is to stop focusing on yourself and start focusing on others and, and do the things that God wants you to do. I, I mean, I, I was reading there in, in Deuteronomy chapter 15, and, and there the entire chapter, well, the first 11 verses anyway, are talking about how, how we need to be generous with what we have. I mean, that's what he was telling the Israelites well, we need to be the same way. Be generous with what you have and, and, and give what you have to help others along the way. And, and stop focusing so much on yourself. Stop falling into the lie that, 
that, that the devil has out there that, that it's all about you. It's not about you. It's all about God. God does not need any of us, but he wants to use us. And, and he wants to use us to make a difference in glorifying God. And you glorify God by serving others, not yourself. So get past yourself and quit being so narcissistic about uh, everything going on around you and start focusing on how God can use you. I mean, it, it, we're such a stinking selfish society today and people need to get over themselves <laughs> and, 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 and walk in the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and you know, I, I think this, I, I do. I, I think the saddest testimony that someone can have is that the day of their funeral, there's a handful of people there. I just find that to be incredibly sad. You know, you know what it tells me? First of all, it tells me maybe the person has out, outlived all their friends, but even then, right here in Psalm 71, God doesn't forget you when you're old. God can still use you to make a world of difference in all kinds of people's lives for eternity. And And I just find that when, when you, and I look, I buried some young people too that, that I, I consider a handful of people in their funeral. And, and, uh, I, we just don't need that kind of legacy in our lives as believers. Get out there and make a difference in people around you. And you'll find that many of your problems will go away because most of your problems you, you have are just self thinking problems and, and, get away from that, right? And and uh, anyway, that's the psychology 101 today. Some might not like it, but uh, it, it is uh, what the scripture tells us it is. So, and then how do we do that? Well, you walk righteously. In Proverbs 12, verse five, six, and seven, the thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. The words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. How do you walk in righteousness? By walking in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. You walk in the righteousness of Christ, in the uprightness of Christ. What would Jesus do? Okay, that's righteousness, okay? You do what Jesus uh, would do in that situation. And so you allow Christ to be seen through your life. And so you're upright in your behavior. And and when you do that, you find out that, that God uses you and, and it overthrows the unrighteous. And let, let us, uh, let's walk in righteousness today and, and let's walk in belief, right? I, I read this, I, I, my, I don't know. I guess it's that, you know, just the shock of, of all the bad news that we've dealt through the years and here, you know, in the last few years, definitely the, incredibly sad, uh, uh, grievous things that have happened to families that, that we know. And, um, and so you get a little gun shy and, but it also gives you more of a heart for these people as you read them and understand what they're going through. But, uh, it, it tells us that <clears throat> in verse 41 of Luke eight, and behold, there came a man named Jairus and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that uh, he would come into his house, for he had one only daughter, about 12 years old, and she lay dying, but as he went, the people thronged him. And so uh, he, he uh, had gotten to Jesus and, and begged for him to save the life of his daughter, and then here comes the crowd, you know, and, and he loses him, I'm sure, and, and uh uh, or he can't go anywhere. I mean, he's got all these people around him and he can't go anywhere. And and while he's there, this lady touches the hem of his garment and she's healed. And well, then it goes on and, and uh, 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 tells us that, hey, you need, to, you need to leave him alone. In verse 49, thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. So your, your daughter has died. There's nothing that can be done. But then it goes on, but when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, fear not. He, he didn't answer the crowd. He didn't answer the one even that come and said, hey, your daughter is dead. He looks at his father, at her father and says that fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. When he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, say Peter, James, and John, father and mother of the maiden. 
And all wept and bewailed her, but he said, Weep not, she's not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out. Now, I, I don't know if, if he if he put out Peter, James, and John also, or I, it doesn't look like he put out the father and, and the mother. I don't know, maybe put the mother out too. I, I don't know who all was was uh, in there, okay? But it says here, he put them all out. So maybe he put them all out and took her by the hand and called saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again and she rose straightway and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. You know what I, I, I see in that? I just don't want unbelief to rob me of what God wants to do with me, with what, whatever I'm a part of. I, I don't want him, I, I don't want to uh, hinder what, what God wants to do at Platte Valley Baptist Church. I, I, I want to trust him completely and I, I want him to use us greatly to make an impact on our community. You know, I, I think that, I think sometimes, not always, okay? I don't believe this is the case always, but I do believe that, that there are some small Christians that do small things. I think there are small churches because they're small-minded. I think there are believers that are small-minded. And, and I think that we need to expand our mind by expanding our faith and asking God to use us greatly and do something great in the hearts and the lives of those around us. And, and I believe that God can, and we need to trust him to do that. We need to uh, walk in righteousness. We need to guard our walk. We need to do the things that God wants us to do, right? But in doing so, we, we want God to do whatever he wants, and I want to completely wholly, faithfully trust him to do it. And you just never know what God can do. I, I just, I, hey, whatever he wants. You know what? Just uh, use us for something great. But for him to do that, you need to know Christ as your savior and you need to be completely in. You, you understand what I mean? You, you need to be willing to grab a hold of the plow and move forward and look straight ahead and don't look back and allow God to use us greatly, right? Let's do that. Let, let's see what God can do. Turn, turn our country around by turning Christians around and move forward and do what God wants them to do. And we can see God do something great. I just never, ever want a lack of faith to hinder me from doing what God wants me to do. So, and you too. So let's get out there. It's Thursday. Tell somebody about Jesus today and uh, let's see God do something great. God bless you guys.